Welcome to the Juniper Network's Virtual Channels for IPsec Tunneling Learning Byte. Although this particular Learning Byte uses virtual channels together with an IPsec tunnel, virtual channels can be used without IPsec or any tunneling on interface to break a single link into multiple virtual channels, each with independent queues and scheduling resources. In our sample topology, all of the routing and IPsec configuration is already in place and we'll focus on the virtual channels and shaping. I wanted to present this scenario because I ran into a situation where a company had a central office and a few hundred remote branches. They were relaying voice, data, and video security feeds from the remote sites to the corporate office and found that when certain application updates were occurring, their voice quality suffered and at times became unusable. They were able to address this issue at each branch for outgoing traffic simply by configuring quality of service or class of service on their provider facing links. But the corporate office was more complex. They had a single outbound ethernet link to their provider without any VLANs or circuit connectivity where normal class of service could be applied on an individual circuit or VLAN basis. They could classify their voice, video, and data traffic at the edge, but they couldn't regulate it on a per branch basis. In other words, if a single branch out of hundreds consumed a large portion of the outbound link, all branches would suffer. What complicated things even further was the fact that all of their communications were encrypted in IPsec tunnels and the original classification of traffic was hidden under the IPsec encapsulation. All of these limitations and restrictions are overcome by using virtual channels. Virtual channels allow you to break a single link into multiple channels much like a circuit based network and assign traffic to each channel according to traffic properties by using a simple firewall filter. In this way, each destination can be assigned its own set of queues and schedulers, but share a multi-access link with other channels. Our sample topology consists of five devices. Four devices are routing devices, branch A, branch B, branch C, and a provider router that isn't labeled in the diagram. The fifth device is a client device in branch A that will send traffic to both branch B and branch C. This is done by using a simple FTP process and a multi-field classifier on the branch A router that assigns each FTP feed to a different traffic class, branch B voice, branch B video, branch C voice, and branch C video. The branch A router will use virtual channels on the single ethernet link towards the provider router. An ingress firewall filter has already been created to classify traffic based on the destination address of each traffic stream. We'll configure the following in this example. We'll configure classifiers and schedulers under class of service. The classifiers for this lab are actually based on an input firewall filter or a multi-field classifier, so we won't cover that. It just assigns a traffic stream to one of our two traffic classes, voice or video, depending on the destination address of the traffic stream. We'll configure schedulers and scheduler maps. We'll configure virtual channels. We'll also look at the egress virtual channel assignment that is done through a firewall filter. In most environments, you can classify traffic based on the default behavior aggregate classifiers, which is shown on the screen. We're using the DSCP default classification based on the bit combination of the DSCP standard. This is applied to the incoming interface that connects to the branch A clients. Again, although we have this in place, we're using an input firewall filter for multi-field classification. What something we did do was rename our forwarding classes to give them names that are more intuitive for our environment. This is our scheduler configuration. The schedulers are a template for the traffic that will enter the virtual channels. Each channel that has these schedules mapped to it will have its own queues available. In this example, each channel will be broken down into best effort, voice, video, and network control traffic. The configured transmit rates limit each type of traffic to about 500 kilobits per second for voice and video and assign slightly different values to best effort and network control. The exact keyword has the effect of capping the traffic at that rate without letting it borrow transmit rate from other queues that may not be using their full resources. The scheduler map bundles different schedulers into a group of settings that can be applied to an interface. Instead of applying the scheduler map to an interface, which is what you usually do, 
we're going to assign it to virtual channels within a virtual channel group. Each channel will receive the resources specified within the scheduler map statement. Where the transmit rate in the scheduler applies to the rate traffic is transmitted from queues on an interface or channel, the shaping rate within the virtual channel is a hard limit on the transmit rate of that channel regardless of how many resources are configured in the scheduler. It's like breaking it out into its own separate physical interface. Based on this configuration, there are three channels in the group, branch BVC, branch CVC, and default VC. The combined shaping rates of all three channels is 1.5 megabits per second, so that is the most that will be transmitted out the interface. Once a channel hits its shaping rate, the channel begins to be congested and the traffic begins to buffer in the queues. The virtual channel group is applied to an interface just as a scheduler map would normally be applied. If we examine the firewall filter that assigns traffic to a virtual channel, we can see that it is fairly straightforward. Traffic destined to 172.16.101.0/24 is sent to virtual channel branch B-VC. Traffic destined to 172.16.102.0/24 is sent to virtual channel branch C-VC. Other traffic is sent to the default virtual channel, which isn't shown on the screen. In our example, the physical interface requires per unit schedule configured, even though the interface itself only has one unit. This allows the per channel functionality to work. Since our traffic is going to be encrypted, the VC assignment filter is applied as an output filter on the ST0 interface, which is performing IPsec encryption. If the traffic were not being encrypted, the output filter would be applied to the WAN facing interface. So let's go ahead and check our results. On the left are four FTP sessions. Two sessions go to site B and two sessions go to site C. Each stream is one of the streams that we classified with our multi-field classifier so that we have a voice and a video stream to each site. As we start the feeds, you can see the packet per second and bit per second counters go up in the branch A device, which is VSRX1 as shown on the right. Notice that when we start the voice feed, the entire channel throughput is consumed. When we add the video feed, the throughput doesn't change. This is because the channel has a maximum throughput and the schedulers force the different feeds to share the bandwidth. Once all feeds are started, the total bandwidth of the interface equals the combined bandwidth of the virtual channels assigned to that interface. Our shaping rate was set to 512 kilobits per second for each channel for a total of 1.5 megabits total capacity on the interface. However, no traffic is being sent through the default virtual channel, only through the voice and video channels. There is 500 kilobits per second of combined voice and video on each channel. As we can see, the output rate is sitting right around 1 megabit per second. If we look at the outbound queues on VSRX1, we can see that both voice and video queues are being used and are running at about 75 packets per second each. A simple change in the shaping rate will show how the shaping rate of the virtual channels affects the outbound traffic rate of the interface as a whole. Once the change is made from 500 kilobits per second to 1 megabit per second, the output rate doubles. Each channel is shaped individually even though they all share the same physical interface and they all share the same logical interface as well. The settings are independent so if we make a change to a single channel the other channels aren't affected. The total traffic flow out of the physical interface will always match the combined shaping rates of the channels assigned to that interface. Here we reduce the branch C channel to 256 kilobits per second. Now branch B has four times the capacity of branch C. With the device configured as it is, the shaping rate of the interface and the transmit rate of the schedulers allows either voice or video to use the entire pipe. A change of the scheduler rate for voice or video will adjust how much of the channel each type of traffic can consume. In this way, if a heavy data stream comes across the wire, it can't consume the resources of the voice or video channels completely and voice and video quality is preserved. The changes we're going to make will be pretty drastic to demonstrate this. 
To demonstrate it, I'll go ahead and change the scheduler for the video traffic to 56 kilobits per second. That's pretty low, but our goal is to back up the video queue so that random early detection goes into effect, and we should see some red drops on the video queue. We also see that the video transfer rate to both sites changes. I'll set things back the way they were when we started, and as expected, the outbound traffic rate goes back to where it was. Using virtual channels on an interface such as an Ethernet interface can help you break up a single interface into multiple granular channels with independent class of service on each channel, even though it's a shared medium. Thank you for joining us for this learning bite. We hope you found it informative and helpful for your environment. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.